All right, let's do this. Quick Zephyr 101 tidbit for you all. Uh, we're talking about PM device API and controlling your devices in runtime using the power management API. Maybe you have situations where you need to control these power subsystems or control peripheral in runtime versus just kind of letting the system do it on its own. So we'll be doing a quick example here and hopefully this will help you manage your power on your device dynamically. Let's jump in. So it will give you, uh, so if you just enable the plain old config PM, the power management API, um, it'll give you some sane defaults and that should, as long as your device manufacturer, as long as they have the good support and their drivers for this, should kind of do what it's on, on its own. Uh, but in some cases you need to make some changes dynamically, maybe at runtime, maybe you want to use your interface for a certain amount of time during runtime, shut it off when you're not using it. So the, the standard API, the standard kind of power savings setup is not there. So we have to enable the configuration. So the config PM device, and that will enable your man power management device API to be called and you can change things on the fly. So we're using it in this in this case, uh, the UART console. There's some interesting things happening here. Let me zoom out. During a boot up process on say the NRF9160 Feather, there's actually two images that get called before you actually get to your code, to your application code. You have the bootloader and then you also have the SPM, the Secure Partition Manager, or um, in newer versions of NCS is actually slightly different. But the main thing is here that there's actually several images that get loaded before you actually get to your application. What happens here is sometimes there's different drivers or something gets changed or GPIOs get set depending on the configuration of those sub images. So you can imagine uh, things get turned on, they don't necessarily get turned off. So this is what we're talking about here. I'm gonna jump over back to the slides. And so we're turning off the UART because it actually gets turned on in the bootloader stage and we'll disable it to reduce the power usage. And only in only a few lines of code, as we'll see, uh, you can get there where you can reduce your power usage by a factor of four. Uh, here's the configuration. As you can see, you have the uh, power management device API and also just turning on power management in general. One thing we're going to be doing in the code first is just getting that device. So we're using UR0 in this example. We're just getting it through the device DT get macro. Pretty standard stuff. Now we've created this uh, static function. It is called during the initialization of this app application. Uh, it's called setup your, just making sure that the device is ready, it's initialized, there's nothing wrong there. You're typically never gonna get, you're never gonna get this error, but uh, <clears throat> you never know. So it's always good to check. And then uh, you have, we're, what we're doing here is, okay, we're assuming that the UART module has been turned on. So first thing we want to do is make sure that the receiver is turned off. The receiver on the UART, on the UART peripherals, at least on the Nordic chips, are very expensive. They, if they're running, they can be up to one milliamp of current draw. So you need to be careful about that. And then we get the we give the UART peripheral about 100 milliseconds just to kind of settle. The last thing we want to do is actually call that that PM API. So the what we just enabled is this PM underscore device underscore de action run. And uh, we're going to be running the PM device action suspend. So there's a list of actions that you can do. Um, you can restore a device from sus uh, suspension or and you can also suspend it, i.e. turn it off. And that's this is the more, most important part right here. This is the API, API call we're talking about that will make the difference in your application. And here, uh, here's some quick measurements. You can see uh, with, without calling this UART function that we just created, we're drawing about, on average, 20 microamps of current. Now, this is surprising. I am using a newer version of NCS, and uh, I was expecting about a milliamp, so somehow it's only 20 microamps. <laughs> Not sure what happened here. Maybe the receiver was already switched off. That's the biggest thing that will cause it, but... In this case, we do actually have some savings, some power savings. So if we jump to the next slide, oh, so keep this in mind, 20 microamps. 
if we can jump to the next slide, you can obviously see at the same time frame, you can see the same on the on the uh, dual scope capture here. There's a lot less activity. There's a lot less stuff going on. So on average, we're we're drawing about 5.4 microamps, which is almost a factor of four, which is great. Um, and as you as you can imagine, if you if there was other things turned on, you can turn them off. You could save a bunch of power. So in this case, this is the NRF9160 Feather in an active sleep. So it's sleeping, it's on, but this is kind of like the lowest amount of current that you'd be drawing when it's on and active and you have the, the buck converter still running. So so using the Jet device API for runtime changes, uh, it's great for dynamic. So if you're changing things on the fly, if you want to turn on console for a little bit for configuration, and then you want to turn it off later, this is a great option. Uh, otherwise, enabling the, the standard uh, power management APIs that do the automatic stuff should work in most cases, and it'll help you get most of the way. But uh, if you have some kind of special dynamic things going on in your application, you definitely want to check out the power management device API. That's it for this tidbit. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.